right let's 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 jump on to the technical topic right what is soft circuit and why is soft circuit so before why soft circuit let's address what soft what is soft circuit this is the definition from iec 60909 accidental or an intentional conductive path between two or more conductive paths forcing the electric potential differences between these conductive paths to be equal or close to zero this is this is a short circuit definition as per iec 60909 so what is short circuit this could be an accidental or it could be an intentional both intentional tests short circuit tests are done in labs right like kima cpr in india etc so this fault or a short circuit could be accidental or an intentional and what it is it's a conductive path between two or more conductive paths it's a conductive path between two or more conductive paths and forcing the electrical electric potential <coughs> potential difference which is like voltage between these two conductive path to be equal or close to zero so i have r phase y phase b phase this and of course ground or earth whatever you can call so this could be like a conductive path between two or more which means it could be one phase and one ground one phase and another phase or it could be more also it could be like more than two conductive paths also r y b r y ground right etc also and forcing the electric potential difference forcing the electric potential difference between this conductive paths between this conductive paths to be equal or close to zero when it will be equal to zero when it is a bolted fault when there is no fault impedance there is no arc resistance then the short circuit results in the voltage difference between these two conductive paths to equal to zero which means r phase is falling directly on the ground the voltage between r and ground will become zero so that is i mean for say equal to zero sometimes the fault may not happen with zero fault impedance that means there could be an arc resistance there could be a fault impedance which means there will be a voltage there will be a voltage between this two that means it will be close to zero like means 11 kv system or like r phase conductor broken and falling on a tree still the r phase has a voltage r phase voltage of 11.3 came down to maybe 1 kv or 2 kv it's close to zero but it is not equal to zero so that's that's the definition of short circuit as per iec 60909 it could be an accidental or intentional it's a conductive path between two or more conductors forcing this electrical potential difference between this conductive paths equal to zero if it is a bolted fault or close to zero if it is fault with a fault impedance or arc resistance of course in realistic uh, scenario most of the time the fault will be happening with at least a small small fault impedance it may not be like always a bolted fault which might be possible so what i mean by this like means we need to really understand one more aspects also when you are doing a simulation in power system simulation software this results will never ever match when there is a fault occurs in the actual site try to understand this when you are doing a short circuit study simulation most of the time you are doing without a fault impedance and the fault impedance cannot be identified in the simulation so whenever the fault happens the fault current will be always less than what is the maximum fault current which you have find out in the simulation means for so many people used to say that like coming I mean, to say simulation and real time will not match we are doing a simulation to find out the worst case fault current so that we can do so on so on so forth actually in a real time when there is a fault obviously the fault current will be less than what we have found out in simulation if the fault current is less than what we have found it in simulation then our simulation is right only when the actual fault current exceeds the result of your simulation then there is something wrong with the simulation whenever there is a fault and the fault current in the reality in the disturbance recorder is less than what the fault current which you found it in simulation that's obviously okay because the fault has happened with some fault impedance or a pre fault voltage is not 1.1 per unit or the voltage the fault has not occurred probably at like zero crossing instant etc etc so in reality the fault happens the fault current will be less than the worst case maximum short circuit current we have identified in the simulation right let's go and probably address why short circuit so means what say it is not commercially viable to construct a power system which is 100% free from failures if somebody argues that it is technically possible feasible to design a power system which is 100% free from failures i will not believe that also but even for the argument sake if we consider it's not commercially viable to construct a power system 
which is 100% free from faults or failures. So what we need to do, we need to ensure that the system is capable of withstanding the fault till the fault is cleared by the protection system. In fact, the protection system is not really clearing the fault, it is isolating the fault. So what we need to understand is, what we need to understand is, it is impractical to design a power system which is free from failure. So we have to design a system in such a way that the system is capable of withstanding the fault till the fault is cleared. Why do we need a short circuit? We need a short circuit study because we cannot prevent or eliminate faults. Fault will definitely happen in the system if it is commercially viable system design which we have done. Then we need to ensure that our system is capable of withstanding the fault till the fault is clear. Then like you need to find out what's the soft circuit current so that you can design a system which can withstand that fault current. And that's the reason why we need a soft circuit. Right, let's, let's go probably deeper into like why, why do we need a soft circuit studies. Like that first one is like outer, outer look. Let us go a bit more deep. Like why, why do we need a soft circuit study? So most of the times we will think always that means why soft circuit breaker rating. That, that's what our thought. But it is not the case. Means what say when the fault occurs, breaker is interrupting a fault. But fault current is flowing through all the equipments. It's a transformer, cable, transmission line, CT, circuit breakers, like all switch gears, like all, all the equipments, the fault current is flowing. So there are two aspects of it. The equipment which isolates the fault has to interrupt the fault current, no doubt about that. But till this interruption device interrupts the fault current, all other equipments, those who are carrying the current has to withstand that current. Means what to say, to find the short time rating of all equipments, because why we are calling it a short time rating, in low flow, we find out the continuous rating of all the equipments. A cable which has to carry continuously 200 amps, 24 by 7, 365. That's a continuous rating of it. But when there is a fault current, the fault current will be 35 kilohertz. Assume that the relay clears the fault or isolates the fault in, say, example, 0.2 seconds. This fault current has to be withstood by this cable till the fault is clear. And why it is a short time rating? This is not going to be continuous rating. It is going to be a short time till the fault is clear. And short time rating of equipments will vary from equipment to equipment. Typically, I mean, for say transformers, you will be having like two seconds as the short time withstand duration. Cables, you may be designing for 100 milliseconds, but it's more feeders are like 250 milliseconds. Depends on the consultant to consultant. And if it's an incomer, it is more and so forth. Similarly, for a transmission line, motors, switch gears, CT circuit breakers. Like if it is a switch gear, you will lost like one second switch gear or three seconds switch gear and so on and so forth. So one thing which is pretty much clear, all the equipments in the power system should have the capability to withstand this fault current till the fault current is interrupted by the circuit breakers. And second important thing, the equipment has to withstand the fault current which is flowing through this equipment, but this equipment may not be able to withstand when the fault is within this equipment itself. So when we say transformers has to withstand the through fault current for a two seconds as per IEC 6076, mm -hmm. through fault current, not the fault within the transformer. If the fault happens within the transformer, the transformer may be busted. Like we cannot prevent that. Means when we say short time rating, it is a current which is flowing through this equipment when the fault is in the other equipment, not when the fault is within this equipment. All the equipments in power systems are designed to withstand the fault outside this equipment, not within this equipment. That means if there is a fault happens within this cable, this cable will not be able to withstand that fault. Whereas if the fault happens in like motor terminal or a transformer terminal, this cable should be capable of withstanding the fault. Similarly for a transformer. It doesn't mean like, means what say, if there is a fault in the cable or a transformer, the cap cable will be burst or transformer will be burst. Sometime by luck, probably it can withstand. But our system design is in such a way that we ensure that the equipment is withstanding through fault currents. And probably if there is a fault in the motor or generator, definitely there will be a damage. And we are trying to clear the fault as quick as possible so that the damage is limited, right? If there is a fault in cable, insulation is punctured. That's the reason why the fault has happened. If the fault inside a transformer, the insulation has failed. That's the reason why the fault has happened. So what I'm trying to say, if the insulation has broken, 
and then probably obvious that there is a damage which is already done. Then what we are trying to do, we are trying to limit the damage by means of isolating the fault as quick as possible. So why short circuit? First and primary point is to find out the short time rating of all power system equipments. And the second point is breaking, making and DC breaking requirements of interrupting equipments. Most of the times people always have a mindset that like means to say 40 kilos, 31.5 kilos, etc. So people will always look at like uh, uh, means what to say RMS current, not the peak current and DC current. When you are talking about the breaking, making, and the DC breaking, you need to ensure all the three capabilities the breaker has. If the fault current is 38 kilamps, and if you are choosing a 40 kilamps, it doesn't mean the breaker is sufficient because making current of the breaker could be only 84 kilamps, whereas the making current in the system could be like maybe 100 kilamps or 110 kilamps. So you need to ensure that. You need to ensure that the breaking and making, breaking is RMS, making is peak, and DC, DC breaking, like means to say, the breakers typically will have about 30 percentage of RMS current as the DC breaking, which means 40 kilamps, 40 kilamps breaker will have like 12 kilamps DC breaking capability. We need to ensure that the DC fault current is less than less than 12 kilamps. And probably, uh, I'm sure, like if you have worked in a large scale power plants like thermal plant, the gas based plants, hydro, nuclear, etc., means for a generator circuit breaker where the expire ratio is much, much higher, the DC component delay, I mean, so the DC component takes like longer, longer, longer time to decay, and hence your breaker should have like highest possible DC interrupting capability. Normal breakers, normal vacuum circuit breakers will have the DC breaking capability of about 30%. But if you take generator circuit breakers, it may be 100% DC component, sometimes more than that also, like 141 percentage, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe you can probably look at one of the course what we have circuit breakers and generator circuit breakers in our similar that gives like very detailed idea, right? Reason for STR of an equipment during the fault, Till the fault is cleared, the equipment has to withstand a fault. Otherwise, all the equipments will get failed. So means what say, when there is a fault happens in the generator or a transformer or a motor, the cable which is carrying the short circuit current has to withstand. If the cable itself damages, then it is like a costly affair. So obviously, short time rating of the equipment is needed. Short time rating defines the damage curve. So I mean, what say, short time rating is a dot, whereas like a damage curve is with respect to time. So means what to say, like we need to look at two things. When I say, I mean, what to say 40 k in one second, if the fault current, actual fault current happens, you say some 30 kilos, it will be standing for a more time. So means what to say, short time rating and probably the damage curve are like one and the same. Short time rating is a one dot because 40, like keep, I mean, what to say, current in one axis, time in another axis. And like 40 k in one second, you are saying like, then it is a dot, single dot. And probably if the current is 38 kilos, if you're trying to find out like what's the time which this equipment will withstand, then probably you're putting a graph. So means short time rating as well as the damage curve are one and the same. Short time rating is one dot in that graph and probably means damage curve is extending, I mean, for say, from full load current to the maximum short circuit current, right? One more important aspect like uh, to find the voltage rise during the fault, like many people think that uh, during the fault, the voltage will collapse, that's true. But that's not necessarily true always. Say, example, if you have a single line to ground fault in a resistance grounded system, ungrounded system, resonance grounded system, the voltage will rise in the healthy phase. And you need to ensure that you need to ensure that the voltage rise during the fault is not really damaging any other equipments. Right. So that that also probably you have to, you have to check. So faults cannot be prevented. At best, what we are doing, we are attempting to mitigate. We are attempting to mitigate to certain extent, not to full extent, to certain extent and contain the potential damage. That means if the fault happens, definitely there will be a damaging effect. And what we are trying to do in the protection, we are trying to best possible minimize or limit the damages. We are not preventing or eliminating the damage. Probably I used to always say this relay. And circuit breaker is an ambulance waiting in the highway, expecting you to meet an accident so that it can carry you to the hospital quickly. It is not preventing the accident. 
after the accident it is trying to i mean was a carry that person to the hospital as quick as possible to save got that person but like it is it is not preventing the falls right like this is always an important aspect which you need to properly think about why healthy face voltage rise during the single line to ground fall i guess like one of the video which we have in our youtube channel short circuit i guess like i have explained in detail so i mean for say if it is an ungrounded system or the single line to ground fall during single line to ground fall healthy face can rise up to root three times let's let's probably deep dive into a short circuit again right why short circuit studies the short circuit study like we have first discussed like it is impractical to design a system which is free from failures then we have decided we have to design the equipment to withstand that fault we have this i mean so to design the interrupting equipments to have braking making and dc interrupting capability to find out the voltage rise so that the equipment insulation are met, like designed to meet the requirements etc in addition to that why we need a short circuit studies which most of the time this is ignored is the slide like you this is like a most important slide which you need to understand why short circuit the short circuit is not necessarily for this only your objective is to perform a short circuit study then this is this is where you need a short circuit study but if your objective is something else like if you are want to try to do a motor acceleration study then you need a minimum short circuit correct for that like you need to perform a short circuit study to find out what's the minimum short circuit correct if you are doing a transient stability minimum short circuit your critical clearing time will be less so you need to look at like what's the minimum short circuit correct for a harmonic analysis you need to have a data from minimum short circuit current to maximum short circuit current because you do not know where the resonance occurs few people go only with the minimum short circuit current for a harmonic analysis that's not true you need to check is there any possibility of the resonance from minimum short circuit current to the maximum short circuit current and it's also provides an input to the relay coordination what i mean by that minimum short circuit current is needed to validate the sensitivity of the relays and maximum short circuit current is needed to check the coordination is proper means many people think that the relay has to be coordinated for a minimum short circuit current which is not true ieee 242 also slightly wrong probably when they have described the towards you need to coordinate the relays for a maximum short circuit current not for a minimum short circuit current assume that the minimum short circuit current is 10 kilams and the maximum short circuit current is 35 kilams you need to do the relay coordination you need to do the relay coordination up to 35 kilams not to 10 kilams if you are coordinating the relays only up to 10 kilams if the fault current exceeds 10 kilams in the real scenario then you will not have a coordination you need to validate the coordination up to the maximum short circuit current and you have to validate the sensitivity of the relays whether the relays are capable enough to detect the fault or not that you need to validate for the minimum minimum short circuit so which means like you need to perform the relay coordination study with the maximum short circuit and with that setting you need to validate like means the relays are capable enough to detect the fault in the minimum short circuit current its input to the r class study also <coughs> in r class study also like you need a minimum short circuit as well as a maximum short circuit and in between all this range as well because i mean so in most of the times r class study people will check only at the maximum short circuit maximum short circuit your mccb or acb might be tripping in instantaneous whereas i mean towards the at a minimum short circuit current or in between minimum and maximum short circuit current some places this i will not trip so it will trip in l or s in the low voltage system so i am talking about with respect to lsig electronic relays so though the current is slightly less the fault clearing time is much much higher so i square t is the incident energy and you need to probably look at you need to probably look at i mean for say from minimum short circuit current to the maximum short circuit current where the incident energy is high so you need both minimum as well as the maximum short circuit current so temporary over voltage and sfo studies like the objective of tov and sfo you are trying to find out the maximum rise in voltage in tov and sfo like probably means during transformer energization like you are trying to find out the reduction in the voltage or dip in the voltage both the cases minimum short circuit current gives the minimum short circuit current gives the i mean for say worst case and hence like you need to use minimum short circuit current for tov and sfo and like if the fault happens what's the effect like the effect is like mean to say there are two aspects of it one is electrodynamic stress other one is thermal stress like here like again you have to look at two important aspects i square t 40 ka one second this around probably provides thermal stress 
but like whereas what's electrodynamic stress the peak current decides what's the electrodynamic stress electrodynamic stress that's because of the peak current you can see here this is not a thermal stress this is not a thermal stress it's an electrodynamic stress so means what's it you have an rms current <coughs> i square t that increases the temperature that's an altogether different where your pvc is allowed up to 160 degree xlp is allowed up to 250 degree celsius this are all something which is there right like you can you can really look into that but there is another important aspect which you cannot neglect is electrodynamic stress which is because of the peak current so you cannot really neglect that also so you can see here this are all probably the short circuit test on the cable you can you can see here right that's is pretty much of electrodynamic stress electrodynamic stress and thermal stress is like about rising temperature right cool so let's go back so you need to really look into two aspects one when you have when you have means for set fault there are two stresses one is a thermal stress which is happening because of increase in current increase in losses increase in temperature that's a thermal stress second one is electrodynamic effect where probably the electrodynamic force probably means to say i mean to the process the equipment short circuit study results in undesirable heavy current excessive magnitude of current that results in equipment damage like transformers motors etc it's like an excessive over voltage as i told like when there is a single line to ground fault in resistance grounded or ungrounded or resonance grounded systems it results in an excess over voltage that results in the second failure second failure of the system and like it's hazardous to the working professionals and probably means another important aspect this fault probably results in generator out of step which means like angular stability is another aspect which you need to check when there is a fault happens in a high voltage or extra high voltage system the fault has to be cleared as quick as possible much before the generator goes out of step otherwise like before you are clearing the fault before you are clearing the fault so uh, means what say we will be able to uh, i mean what say if you want to maintain the system stability then you need to clear the fault well within the critical clearing time even though if there is no equipment damage thermally even though if there is no electrodynamic stress but probably the generators may go out of step all right so let's move on like what are the different types of fault so types of fault series faults and sun faults i guess like we we are not really uh, i mean what say um, looking the series fault seriously but the, this is also like really we have to look at single conductor open and two conductor open you need to ensure that means what say during single conductor open or a two conductor open the negative sequence is not really damaging your rotating equipments like motors and transformers uh, sorry motors and generators so negative sequence you have you have your motors and you have your generators both are rotating devices negative sequence like provides a breaking torque and hence you need to ensure that for an open circuit faults which is also called as a series faults you need to ensure that the negative sequence which is coming into the system is not really going to damage your rotating equipment which is motors and generators because negative sequence provides the breaking torque which rotates this device in the opposite direction and damages the equipment why fault rating is sometimes mentioned in mba short circuit root 3 into open circuit voltage into short circuit current whatever the convenient way which you can refer i mean to say either current or mba short circuit both both are the same all right then it comes to the sun fault when it comes to the sun fault we have like balanced faults and unbalanced faults and balanced fault it could be like a three phase fault three phase to ground fault and unbalanced fault it could be like lg ll llg etc now let me ask one more interesting question if there is a three phase fault if there is a three phase fault do you think that the fault current in all the three phases will remain same just to answer the question with yes or no if there is a three phase fault fault current in all the three phases remain same or are different in reality no in reality no in a practically if there is a three phase fault happens if three phase fault happens even if your source is balanced even if your network is balanced even your loads are balanced 
your short circuit current will not remain same. Let me repeat my statement. Even if the source is balanced and source impedance are balanced, network, when I say network, it could be transmission lines, cables, transformers, everything is balanced. And your load, contributing loads like motors, etc., etc., is also balanced. Everything is balanced. Assume that it's a pure, perfect, balanced system. In practical, which is not possible, but even if you assume, if there is a three phase fault occurs at the same instant, even then the fault current will not really be the same in all the three phases because when my R phase is at zero, Y will be at minus 120, B will be at plus 120. When the fault occurs, the fault current will not remain same, at least the asymmetrical current will not be same. So you will not have the same fault current. So means what is the, the assumption of like IEC 6909 and whatever the RMS which you have studies, like we need to understand like what, what are the assumptions which has been taken. You need to understand, you need to understand the, uh, I mean, for say, soft circuit study, what we are doing in ETAP, Pixel and PSSE, SKM, SIME, whatever may be the softwares, we are assuming, means what say, R phase, Y phase, B phase currents are equal in magnitude and 120 degree apart, even during the fault, irrespective of the fault locations and etc. And we are not considering any unbalance. So that's not reality. So means whenever there is a fault which happens and probably means what say, the fault current will not be same even if it's a three-phase fault or three-phase to ground fault, even if the network is balanced. And unbalanced fault, obviously your fault current in different phases will be different, line to ground fault, line to line, or line to line to ground fault. And some, some examples of images. Right, let's, let's come to the standards. Like what are the standards talks about the short circuit studies across the globe? It's ANSI or IEC 60909, IEC 61363, that's like dynamic short circuits. VD, AS. so means what to say, most of the times means what to say, all the standards, what they are doing is like uh, the equations to solve this short circuit problem is like algebraic and linear. And you can easily do manual calculations, at least for a small system. You may not be able to do for big systems, but definitely you will be able to do for the uh, small systems.